Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we'll be discussing my thought process and the choices I made as I built a simple project with Next.js. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Hey guys, hello and welcome. Say, I've had lots of video requests and I'm looking forward to starting a new series next week. That said, I want to do something just a little bit different today. When it comes to projects, sometimes I'm asked how I know what to build and then after that, how I know how to build it. So today, I want to walk you through my choices, my decision process in building a Next.js React application. Just a simple one, but nevertheless, walking through the steps that I took and the decisions that I made. And I'll still provide the code for the project in GitHub if you wanna look at that. However, you might also wanna to try to recreate this application on your own as a challenge and then look at my code. Either way, I'm not going to walk through like I usually do in a tutorial and show you the code step by step and how to write it all out. You can refer to that, but what's important here are the decisions I've made. So let's get started. Okay, so let's first look at this simple application and what it does. I called it Lyric Learner. I'm in a couple of bands and I have to memorize a lot of lyrics and sometimes I'm singing the wrong lyrics and so I continually work on my memorization of those lyrics. So let's grab some lyrics from a web page. I've already searched for the lyrics for For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica, a little bit of a classic heavy metal song. Let's copy that and let's drop them in to this original window over here. These would be the original lyrics. We can paste those in and refer to those. It says the original has 73 words. Now I'm going to hide those and I can try to type those out by memory. Let's see what we get. And I'll get some wrong on purpose just so I can show what wrong words are also. But I say make, say this fight on the hill in the early days. So you can see I got this wrong when I typed this, it should have been his and it should have been day instead of haze. So we see the results as we type. And if we don't wanna see those, we can hide those. As a matter of fact, we can hide any window we want to. Now this was useful for me. So how did I decide what project to build? Well, I had a problem or a need and I decided to build something to fill that need or solve that problem. So that's really the decision there. From there we decide what are we going to use to build the application. Well, I always say use what you're most comfortable with. And lately I'm comfortable with Next.js and I like to use Tailwind CSS and I like to use TypeScript and using a Next.js project makes it very easy to use all of those together. So that's what I decided on for this project. That's the first thing you need to do after you decide what you're going to build is decide what you're going to build it with. So let's take a look at that code. So here we're at the package JSON in the project and you can see I didn't add any additional dependencies, just what I would normally have when I create a new Next.js project and I'm using TypeScript and Tailwind. So I just answered yes to those as I built or created the project. Now from there, really we're kind of creating a React application. We need to stop and think about what the application actually does. This isn't the type of application that has a bunch of things in it that need to have good SEO, that is search engine optimization. I'm not really depending on the caching or the things like that that Next.js provides. This is something I could just build with React, but I'm familiar with Next.js and Next.js does offer a couple of other benefits. One, having those server side components that allows me to grow the application in the future. So I want to connect a database. I want to add users. And then of course, each user could save their own lyrics or you could use this for anything, speeches, recitals, whatever you wanted to memorize. So maybe that, I didn't add that yet, but if I want to in the future, that's good with server components as well. So let's start to look at the structure here. And we just look at the first page of the application and this would be a server component. We didn't put use client at the top, but then you can tell right away, I knew this was basically going to be a React application and a lot of it would be on the client. So I created a client wrapper component where I was going to stick everything else that I would normally have in a React application. But this still gives me that parent server component 
If I want to connect to a database or fetch other data or do anything else in the future, I have that base here, the root, my foundation is a server component, and then I am bringing in the client component. You can also see I have what I called a Lyric provider here. Now this provider is from a React context, and we'll get more into that in just a little bit. So what did I do at first? Well, I just started building. That's what I usually do when I'm figuring everything out. And then I kind of organize a little bit later. So in this client component called client wrapper, and we start with use client here in Next.js, I just started to build the application. But as I start to build the application, things become clear. And if we look back at the application, and I'll unhide this, you can see this original and where I type, the original and the learner columns, are basically identical. Now results is a little bit different with what we do over here, but we can type into either one of these fields. They're both actually text areas. And that's because I'm using the same component for both. When you start to write duplicate code, you realize that, hey, that could be the same component. So we broke that out into a separate component. I called it lyric column because they both hold the lyrics for my purposes. It could be a speech again or whatever, but that's what we did here. So. Then once I started to build, I started to see patterns. And that told me that yes, I can make this a separate component. Likewise, I knew the state was going to be more complex than just bringing in a use state hook. So I knew right away I was going to be using a reducer and probably a context. But did I create the context right away? No, I just created a reducer up above here in this client component. And I used it for a while before I went over to the context because I really wanted to just get that functionality going first. Now let's quickly look at these other components here. We have the Lyric component here. And this of course powers both the original and where I would type as a user. And it's based on a text area. And I don't work with those all the time. So one thing I had to do was go into the React documentation and look at how to handle a text area once again because I just hadn't done that in a while. And here you can also see what I did for these components. We do have a use state hook inside because we show or hide these components. So based on this one state, which is show and set show, we can set that tailwind class and we either set them to block or to hidden, so they, the display would essentially be none with hidden. So that is in these components. Now let's once again go back and look at the application quickly, and here's the results column. It's different. This is a div. This is a big div, not a text area. And then inside of here, we are putting in spans, essentially, that show either this was green for, hey, we got it right, or red, that we got it wrong. So it looks a lot like these, but it is different. So let me bring that up quickly then in the code as we look at the results column component and see how we had to handle this. One thing that I had to work on just a little bit is the Tailwind CSS handling the flex box. And notice if I bring this back up, they're all here at the top, they're not spread throughout. But this was a little bit of a trick here because we have this div that needs to grow just like the text areas do. But then once we do that and we set it to flex grow and we start dropping in flex items, you'll get the first one at the top and the next one will be halfway down here and they start to stretch to fill out this area. So what you wanna do is put another div around them that is not set to grow and it, it just grows with the content. So that is how I set that up. And you can look at the code for that. It just took just a little bit more thought there. Also, Notice we've got results.map right here. Now we're passing in results as a prop, and that eventually comes from this client wrapper where we're getting it in a context here at the top, and here's the results. Now that's an array. Normally, if we go and look at the context, which is the most complicated looking thing in this application, but normally, if we create that, and I'll find here where it is created as we pass it down, we have a hook in here, use lyric context, and we're creating results right here before we pass those down. And we map over them. In a component, we would do that, and that would be that. We would essentially be able to display results at that point. But you can't do that here, even though we do have the span elements in this results array, which is what results is. Once we get back into our results component, we once again 
need to map over results. And so then you can see I just took whatever the element was and returned it once again, but that goes ahead and displays those results in this component after it was received in the client wrapper through context and then passed down to the results component. So as I mentioned, the most complex thing you will see in this entire application is the context. And it also has a use lyrics hook as well that is created here. And we can look at this. I always do this with the context. So it's just a little easier to use. And then we bring in use lyrics. But here, this provider, if you look at my TypeScript course, this is where I go over exactly how to create a context like this with TypeScript in React. And it's, of course, it's a longer tutorial. It takes a little bit more time. So if this is confusing to you at all, as you review the code, you'll want to go to my TypeScript course and check out that tutorial on creating a context because this is very much like what I do in that course. So it's handling a little bit more complex state here than we would of course have with just use state, but then it gets a lot simpler and we've kept all of that logic out of the other components we have put our application together with. So all we have to do here is have use lyrics. We bring in everything we want from the context and then you'll see as they're passed in, it's fairly simple. Here is the text for the original column. Here's the text for the learner column. And here's that results array for the results column. We keep it fairly simple. And then we display stats down here. So when I bring this back up, they're all calculated as I type here too. So I can change this to make his fight on the hill in the early day. Hey, a few extra tools I just want to bring up that allowed me to put my ideas together for this application. One is I use Notion and I kind of type out an outline for my ideas. You can even put in some code here as I had a proof of concept and just hammered out some simple vanilla JavaScript code to get my idea down before I had time to actually build it. So I did that. As I build any project, I typically have the Tailwind docs open. They're so easy to search for everything I might look for and then pull it up and I am reminded of how to put that into a class for Tailwind. And then I use JavaScript Playground, just a playcode.io, just a website I found when I think I Googled for JavaScript Playground actually and it can put up some other templates. And that's where I hammered out that basic code before I put it into Notion. So just a few tools here that I thought I'd share as well. Of course, I always reference MDN if I need that or the React docs or the Next.js docs as well. But I wanted to share the tools I used as well as I was building this simple application. So I'd like to uh, get your ideas on this, share your notes, look at the code, any issue you see, or if you think there'd be a new feature to add, I'm gonna read the comments. Of course, you could also talk about it on my Discord, wherever you wanna put that information. This is just a little bit different tutorial to show you my thought processes, and I'd love to get your feedback on it as well. I hope this has helped you kind of think about building an application, at least those of you that have asked me how I do it. I hope this has helped you look into my thought process a little bit, so identify what you want to build or a problem you want to solve, a need you have, and then think about what you're going to use to build it. And then I like to start building right away. And from there, we apply kind of the best practices, organize the code, separate everything out. So that's my personal process. I hope this tutorial has helped you as well. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.